Okay, welcome to our third session uh, today. So uh, we are looking at the issue of calibration. Let me share my screen. So if you if you think about uh, what SAM is a little bit more carefully, you would have a SAM in the data, right? So in the economy, you go there and you collect the data. So there is a uh, there is a set of rows, there is a set of columns. So for each row and column, you have some data, sometimes zero, sometimes a positive number. So these are the volumes of transactions, okay? And then you have a theoretical SAM, okay? Because um, in the model, uh, you have consumption, you have saving, you have um, the demand for factors, you have the supply of factors, you have equilibrium conditions, you know, government is collecting taxes, government is spending some, some money there, uh, there's, there's investment out there. So all of these, of course, depends on parameters, okay? Because this is, this is the theory, right? Now the idea is to, uh, is to make a match. Uh, this, this part is where it is closer to the, to the econometric estimation stuff. So you want to find some alpha such that, uh, let's say, SAM data IJ minus SAM model IJ alpha uh, is either close to zero or if you have any chance equal zero or closer to some tolerance level. Okay, so epsilon here is some uh, very small uh, number. Okay, positive, of course. So you want to do something like that. Okay, and sometimes theory, the theory allows you to find an exact, exact match. Sometimes you can uh, find a match closer to zero. Sometimes you find a match uh, which is small enough, okay? Um, there are, of course, some, some advanced methodologies. Let me talk about one of them. It is called simulated method of moments. If you have very large data set, if you have large sample, then you can actually find uh, standard errors as well. Okay? So, uh, so you can find the parameters of the structural model, a general equilibrium model, uh, by using simulated method of moments, at least some of them, maybe not all parameters, for instance, your parameter vector would be uh, uh, two components, the, the theta vector and phi vector. Maybe you can set theta uh, arbitrarily, then you can find phi using uh, simulated method of moments, okay? But the idea is, is this. So find an alpha which makes the model SAM close enough to the data SAM, okay? And now I will show you some examples, okay? So, um, one thing before I continue, I should I should mention is this. So in the same data, we have uh, 
we have data in this format, right? So there is a value of transaction. Since we observe this value, um, it has two components, one price, the other is quantity, right? Now, how do we, how do we uh, differentiate between price and quantity? Okay, that's, that's the idea. I mean, that's, that's one difficulty, all right? And uh, what we do here is this. So if I uh, observe this, for instance, I will find uh, another, um, let's say this is um, PAQA, I will find another pricing by changing the measurement units. Change the measurement units of output by making price equal to one. So PB will be equal to one and the measurement unit per, I mean, price per measurement unit, of course, will be different, right? Suppose that you have um, uh, you have, um, so let's say price is um, $10, okay, $10 uh, per uh, kilograms, okay, then you find uh, what? A dollar per um, what? Hectograms? Some some other some other uh, measurement unit. Okay. So then this trick. So this is basically a trick. So this trick allows me to interpret all the values as quantities. All right, so then I adjust my model to make all the prices uh, in the economy by equating, by making all the prices uh, equal to one, okay? For all I and all K, okay? So because I can change the measurement units, it doesn't, it doesn't really change anything, right? Uh, is this a limitation? Well, of course it is, right? Because um, originally we want to, in, in theory, uh, we want to fix one of the prices to unity, or we want to define a unit simplex, for instance. Think, we want to do things like this, but to interpret uh, so we, we, we have to find a way to, to correctly interpret these, these uh, uh, value of transactions, okay? Because these transactions always involve some sort of price and some sort of quantity, right? So we have to do this trick and we typically, uh, so that's, that's the exercise. So typically, uh, that's what in practice, uh, we, uh, we would uh, change the measurement unit from kilogram to hectogram or gram or from uh, you know uh, meter cubes to some other volume unit, from uh, tons to some other uh, uh, weight unit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, uh, by by interpreting interpreting prices as equal to one, so then uh, what I see as value becomes quantity itself. Okay, because if if price is equal to one, uh, then value is equal to quantity. Okay, so so that's the that's the trick. Uh, once we do that, 
uh, we can proceed with uh, with uh, using theoretical relations and the data so that we can calibrate parameters, right? So now let me give you a concrete example, okay? Uh, calibration of utility function uh, parameters, okay? So, so imagine a utility function uh, of two goods, okay? Uh, we have C1 alpha and C2, uh, let's say one minus alpha, all right? So this is your utility and alpha is between uh, zero and one, all right? Uh, and we have, of course, um, let's say we have these budget constraints, right? So P1 and P2 are prices. We are assuming that these are greater than zero and I is income. Or maybe we can, uh, let's use M because Previously, we used M, right? So now, if you solve this problem, of course, you know that at the at the uh, at the optimum, um, a fraction alpha of income is spent to first good, and the fraction one minus alpha of income is spent to second field, right? So we know this from the from the theory. Uh, so in a sense, now these are these are theoretical theoretical SAMs, right? So these are these are SAM in the model. So now from these solutions, we have these, right? P1 C1 star equals alpha M, P2 C2 star is equal to one minus alpha m, all right? Now, um, in the SAM, we observe what? In the SAM, we observe total spending on good one, total spending on good two and income, right? Or total income. So in the SAM, I have, uh, I have this information, right? And then guess what happens? Alpha must be equal to P1 C1 star divided by M and one minus alpha will be equal to P2 C2 star divided by M, right? So if I know, if I know that there is this one consumer with this utility function and with this budget constraint, okay? And if I assume that this consumer behaves optimally and spent uh, her or his income to nowhere else. So the entire income is gonna be spent on either good one or good two. Then I know that these must be true in theory, okay? Then I look at the same data on total spending on good one. And I look at total income, so I use two, these two data points, okay? Point one, point three, and I realize alpha must have a particular value, okay? That's how, would I, that's how I would calibrate uh, the parameter alpha, okay? Now you can imagine, of course, more realistic cases. 
where uh, remember our extended utility function. Okay, now we have um, remember our model. We have sorry uh, many consumers, right? Uh, we have many goods, and then later on. We extended the utility function in this way, right? So this was alpha one, C2, alpha two, dot, 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 CN, alpha N. And then we introduced savings. Remember? And then we write the budget constraint in this way. Plus. Cm plus one, and this will be equal to, of course, omega one. Uh, so this is all, of course, H, right? This is for consumer H. Then you have E one H plus omega two, E two H plus dot, 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 omega K, uh, E K H. Okay, so this is capital A, capital K, right? So now, of course, if you if you solve this, uh, and then if you take the summation of let's say total spending on the first group. Okay. Now you talk about the total spending in the economy for the first good, and then uh, there's total income. Okay, so that, that's originating from, from this, okay? Um, then again, uh, you can, uh, if, if all of these alphas are the same, if there's nothing else, then in the model there is, of course, saving as well. So you can do you can do more realistic stuff. Uh, so that uh, if if every consumer is doing that, they're um, you know um, if they all solve the same problem, for instance, uh, their Lagrange multiplier will be the same for the budget constant, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, uh, depending on your, uh, depending on how complex your economy is, of course, your calibration algorithm or algorithms uh, will be more complex. Uh, let me show you one other thing. So uh, you can have, um, remember the production function. So uh, uh, you have, uh, the production of value added, right, by firm J. So that depends on the use of primary factors uh, by uh, firm J. And then you have this uh, Leontief production function uh, uh, where uh, you know, it depends on, um, you know, value added uh, and other inputs, right? So, uh, in such a in such a problem, remember that we first minimized the total cost associated with primary factors. Uh, right, by choosing these axes subject to some um, value added target. Right, so value added was given, then we first solve for an optimal input mix 
and then from that uh, we obtain this uh, this stuff. But if you know how much firm spends on the first factor, okay, how much firm J spends on the first factor, and what is the total cost? Okay, total cost associated with uh, with production factors. Okay, then you learn, of course, something about the production function parameters. Okay, uh, that production function could be called Douglas, uh, as it was in our example, or it could be uh, some some other type of production function. Most typically, uh, we use, for instance. Uh, constant elasticity of substitution production functions, right? So they look like, um, so output would be in, in general, I'm, I'm writing this for a, for a general case. So let me use here. Uh, so for instance, if you have capital and labor, you would have something like this. So theta uh, capital to the row, then you have one minus theta labor uh, to the row and this entire thing to the power of one over rho, okay? So this is output. Now here, theta is between zero and one. It's a share parameter. And rho is between uh, minus infinity and plus one, okay? So what is happening there? Uh, if rho is equal to one, let me, let me use this space. If of course, uh, if rho is equal to one, this is a linear production function, right? Theta k, one minus theta m. If rho uh, converges to minus infinity, this becomes the Leontief production function, okay? There is no substitution. And if rho is converging to zero, then it behaves like uh, Kovdakis. Okay, it behaves like uh, Cobb Douglas because uh, here the elasticity of substitution is one over uh, one minus rho. Okay, so if rho is equal to one, the elasticity of substitution goes to post infinity because it is perfectly substitute. Uh, if rho is zero, the elasticity of substitution is equal to one. This is Cobb Douglas, right? And if rho is going to minus infinity, the elasticity of substitution is zero, right? Um, because there is no substitution. There is no there is no substitution possibility in the case of Leontief production function. So uh, I will also show you in the in the next week. I will also show you how you can calibrate the production function parameters using SAM data. Okay. So that's all for today from me. Um, again, next week, we're gonna continue uh, with the issue of calibration. I can re-explain uh, the stuff that remains unclear, but basically, let me, let me, let me uh, put some final remarks here. So it is like econometrics in the sense that we use data in the model to learn something about parameter values. Uh, the, the different part is that most of the time we don't have very large data set. We don't have a sample uh, in the traditional sense. So we cannot run econometric uh, estimation because we cannot calculate standard errors. Uh, we, are not, we are not given uh, such a large data set, right? So, but we can still use theory and the data points to arrive some values that still uh, make our model SAM closer to data SAM, right? Because there's a social accounting matrix in the data and there is uh, an abstract theoretical uh, mathematical uh, social accounting matrix. Each, each, each entry in that theoretical SAM depends on parameter values uh, given our solutions, right? So we use these solutions and the data again to learn something about uh, the, 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 the parameters of the model, the, the values of parameters. Uh, if we have a very large data set, we can still do something uh, 
some some advanced algorithms such as uh, simulated method of moments and uh, in such cases, we can also calculate standard errors, um, but most of the time, uh, the best we can do is to do some uh, distance minimization, all right? And in that sense, uh, in, you know, contrary to econometrics, uh, it is deterministic, okay? So we cannot, we cannot really know uh, what, is our, what is our error band. Um, again, next week, I will show you more examples, uh, more slightly more realistic examples. Maybe we can discuss a couple of papers. Uh, maybe I can show you what I did in my uh, existing research um, in terms of calibration. So you can, you can get a better sense. But now if you have questions, we have time, enough time. To, to discuss these things. We're still there, my friends. Yes. So do you have Anything to add or anything to ask? Hocam aslında benim bir internet sıkıntım olduğu için sizi çok iyi takip edemedim. Beni sürekli dersten attı. Ben önce bir kendim tekrar sizin videolarınızı izleyeyim. Anlamadığım yer olursa haftaya sorarım diye düşünüyorum. Peki tamam. All right, next week again we're gonna continue uh, with more examples and possibly recapping what calibration is. So stay tuned for the next week as well. And I will correct the video links. Okay, I will, I will correct these things. Uh, that's, that's, you know, the reason was that um, my, my cloud accounts basically crashed. So I have to correct these. Thanks for, thanks for reminding me. Okay, then. I'm ending the session now. And... Um, I will see you next week. Teşekkürler hocam görüşürüz. Görüşmek üzere. Teşekkürler hocam iyi günler. Bye bye.